I'm having a casual conversation with someone. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How do you, um, oh, 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 I don't know if you remember me, but my name's Gabby. Yep, G-A-B-B-Y. It's short for Gabriella. Oh wait, what? Where am I from? Why couldn't you ask me about the weather? My gut reaction is to say that I don't know, but it's really not an option at this point if I want to end the conversation as quickly as possible. To Latinos, I'm not a real Latina. I'm gringa. To, to Americans, I'm not a real American. My genes say Argentinian, but I often wonder what that means. I never chose to identify. I was just identified. Choose the demographics. Bubble in the answer. Bubble in the race that you most identify with. Check all that apply. Pacific Islander, Asian, African American, Middle Eastern, Hispanic, or Latino. I prefer to check them all, or maybe none of them at all. But of course, by saying that I'm Hispanic, I'll get an advantage. A Latina with good grades and excellent study habits, it's one in a million in the eyes of college admissions. But if they were to see me, would they believe me? If this is the only trait that categorizes me as Hispanic, because unfortunately, I don't fit the classic Latina look. Or maybe it's because my skin is too light. Or because I don't follow the classic tea diet of tacos, tortillas, and tamales. Because no one in my family is a landscaper, maid, or busboy. Because I speak Sp English better than I could ever possibly speak Spanish. Because Latinos live with their mom, dad, brother, sisters, second cousins, half cousins, nephews, and laws. Their, their, their tias live across the street, and their matrinas right next door. They're, la they're lazy, they're loud. Is, it, is this what it takes to be a Latina? Because if that's the case, I honestly don't think I'd cut it. So, as I respond, I brace for their predictable disbelief to my answer. So, hey, um, I'm Argentinian. Right on cue. Oh, really? Yes, really. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a rhetorical question, but I feel like the person's asking me all over again, as if doubtful of my response. As if maybe I got caught up in a very fulfilling conversation that maybe, just maybe, I simply said the wrong label. As if the word really will give me a second chance to change my mind. My favorite part is when they ask me to prove it. Say something in Spanish. At this point I think, what could I possibly say? What should I say? What would satisfy them? I'm probably overthinking this, but at this point I'm overthinking everything. I think about the fact that I have to prove my entire Spanish heritage with one sentence, one phrase. And if I happen to stutter upon that one word, then I probably don't speak Spanish at all. Maybe I should just give up now. So, why am I sharing this with everyone? Well, I don't really know. But I'm still trying to figure that out. Because if I am truly the sum of all my parts, then I'm more than just the confused Hispanic Argentinian American. Then I'm all at once the log logical yet illogical, serious yet silly, sweet yet sarcastic, loving yet loathing 17 year old who speaks two languages and stumbles sometimes in translation, believes in the American dream yet appears through defense her Spanish heritage, and leaves nothing to chance when completing assignments yet superstitiously never dresses for a basketball game with my, without my Rosie, uh, Rosie the Riveter socks. So, if you ever have a conversation with me and we come to a dual halt, do me a favor, ask me about the weather. Um, it was a cold night on the subway. The lights of tunnels were stars. The ceiling was the sky, and the tracks were the endless trail. For the vehicle was empty of all life, except for one man. He stood there, emotionless, without any sort of knowledge where he was going. He was lost. But it was that loneliness in which he found solace. For he was glad he was free. For at last he was alone. For science was his peace, and peace was his heaven. Thank you.